Okay? Let's say you put a solid spherical ball. Mass is equal to uh, 2 kilograms. Radius is equal to 0.8 meters. And the, the, the distance from the bottom of the spherical ball to the ground is equal to, uh, uh, let's say, 3 meters. Find for me the final velocity of the ball. V center of mass. Find the V center of mass as the ball reaches the ground. And then from there you could also find the time, you could find the acceleration and so on. Now if the, the question asks for acceleration, remember what I told you the other day? The question asks for acceleration, you're supposed to use torque because I alpha. Do it that way. If the question just asks velocity, you can either use torque as I alpha and calculate A. From the A, calculate V. Or you can do it the kinetic energy way. Okay? So let me show you first the kinetic energy way because it's a little quicker. The kinetic energy way would be to say the potential energy is equal to the final kinetic energy. Remember what I was saying? This is kind of the kind of example where the object has two kinds of energy, translational and it's rotating, kinetic. Okay? So the total initial potential energy equals to the sum of the kinetic energies. So then you put your The I, what's the moment of inertia of the solid sphere? What axis is it rotating around? It's rotating about an axis going through it, coming out the center of the center, coming out. So that's IZZ or IXX. For the sphere, really, it only has one distinct moment of inertia, right? Uh, so that's 2 fifths MR squared times omega final squared. So we have one half m v squared plus one half one fifth m r squared omega final squared. Then what are we going to do? We're going to use rotational kinematics again that says v tangential equals r omega, right? The v tangential at the end of the rotating object is equal to r times its omega. So I could substitute here V tangential squared so half M V center of mass squared plus half one uh, no sorry one fifth one fifth M V tangential squared then what? How are we going to solve for V center of mass? Because the problem is asking us, what is the V center of mass? Well, here is where we use the fact that pure rolling motion is going to take place. I'm assuming for this problem that it's uh, going to be pure rolling motion. So if it is pure rolling motion, V tangential equals V center of mass. And so you can just substitute there V center of mass. So you have MGH and then combine the two can put in the numbers square root of 10 G H over 7 
What is that? Now, while you do, while you uh, calculate that, let me just show you something. Got it? 6.48. So the center mass of the sphere when it goes down to the bottom is 6.48 meters per second. Now my question is, what would be the center of mass of the a block that does not rotate if it had no friction? If it goes down and then... Uh, goes like that. What would be? Same height, same everything. How would we do that? We could do it the same way actually. MGH equals half mv squared, right? We, we, there's no i omega squared. So that's it. That's the answer. Square root of 2gh, which is equal to what? So for the uh, block, it, ha it's, it doesn't have rotational kinetic energy. It's just translational. So it's uh, square root of 2gh. That one's going to be like 7 or 8 something, right? 7 point. Now, I want someone to be able to answer me, why is the sphere going slower than a block without friction. Yeah. Yeah, so he's saying, he got it good, he's saying that the potential energy in the case of the sphere has to divide up into two kinds of kinetic energy. Right? The potential energy of the sphere has to go into translational plus kinetic. And that means, uh, the, in, a, in a way, you can almost think of it as if the potential energy is sort of wasted, a little bit of it, you know. Some of it goes into translational, some of it goes into kinetic. Quote, unquote, it's wasted. It's not really wasted, but that's the way you can almost think of it. Uh, whereas that one, it goes into pure translational. So since the object doesn't have to roll, it can go faster. This one, the object has to roll, and so it's kind of a little more sluggish. So if they race, the, the cube wins. How about if we put a cylinder? Actually, I talked about this a little bit in the lab, right? If you put a cylinder, who wins between the cylinder and the sphere? Uh, uh, sphere should win, right? It's a little easier. So cylinder, the final velocity should come out even less than 6.48 if it's a solid cylinder. How about if it's a hollow cylinder? This should be the slowest. This is the hardest to rotate, hollow cylinder. So that one, the final velocity should be less than 6.48, maybe 5.2, 5.3 in this case, you know. So it makes sense. Okay, now the next day, I'll do the same problem. I'll add a few more questions to it. And then I'll show you how to do it from a torque equals I alpha pr perspective, how to do the force perspective. The energy perspective is a little quicker, so I wanted to show you that first.